hey what's up guys how are you today uh, so i wanted to ask you guys who all over here are looking for a job hmm interesting quite a few of you guys are <laughs> no no i'm not hiring right now or maybe i am but on a serious note who all over here are looking for a job quite a few of you are what about startups anybody wants to be your own startup hmm love the entrepreneurial spirit over here so today i'm here to talk to you guys about how what you studied should not limit your opportunity to work in any other field of your choice how i went from learning to code in four different languages and finally being able to understand what a lint list is with nodes and everything to sell in plant based milk to the top places in country like taj four season and facebook google and all these places and before i start my own story i wanted to tell you guys about a couple of examples of people who are doing exceptionally well in their field and they studied something completely different like for example lakshman narasimhan who is a mechanical engineer from pune is now going to be the ceo of world's largest coffee chain starbucks while lakshman is carrying the baton at the global level we have our very own fierce leader of mama earth mama earth is a cosmetic a body care brand which is india's first unicorn of 2022 is led by gazel who's a ceo and she did computer science in her bachelor's very different and my story starts from a cold afternoon in derby back in september 2019 when i used to work with rolls royce not the cars the aerospace one don't get confused so uh, one fine afternoon all of us we decided to go out for lunch and people i used to work with they all were aerospace engineers from uh, imperial college london and i was the only one who was not and so we went out for lunch and while walking to the restaurant a couple of airplanes passed by us in the air and one of the guys on the left was like hmm i think that's what that was an a380 and the other one was like hmm, no you're wrong that was a boeing 777 and i was like what what are you guys talking about then they kept on talking about airplane engines airplanes and airplane engines and i felt completely out of the place and i was like hmm what do i do uh their passion about aerospace was unprecedented and that's when i realized was i doing it right like being a data analyst back then i never got that excited seeing the large database like i never went and saw a database and i'm like hmm i'm going to clean this bad boy today <laughs> never happen never so it was an interesting thought was i doing it right so now to fit in the conversation i had to change the topic so i just grabbed a packet of chips from the road and i asked them guys how is this made and when i when when i said that all of us went silent like hmm interesting what just happened and uh, then we were like okay being engineers a lot of questions started popping up how do they cut the potatoes why what machines do they use and the one question which we all have been asking why is there so less chips with so much air we didn't know turn the label around read it couldn't understand anything went back home started searching online and got it chips were easy to understand that was the first time i googled something about food science learned how chips are made then i was like hmm what about beverages how do they make sodas interesting very fascinating stuff guys whenever you get time do read about it and back then i had just realized that i was lactose intolerant and i was hooked on to this brand called oatly oatly is a oat milk brand from sweden they are one of the world leaders leaders right now and so just went online started searching how oatly is made they had their whole process on their website first link read through it glimpse through it done i was a very happy man my curiosities were fulfilled i knew the peop- the products i was using how they are made and everything and it was fun fast forward a couple of years ago we wanted to get into a food science business and the first question was how do you make a shelf stable plant based product how so that i remembered that oatly has their whole process on the website i'm like cool call my put up my phone call my co-founder i'm like bro listen oatly has their whole process on the website let's just copy that you know like how we copy a piece of code from the internet and then put it in our program edit it easy peasy works always <laughs> we always done that same thing went to the website started reading 
and it had random words like enzyme in, milin, mitsin, homogenizing. And we're like, what? What's happened? Never read this. Turned to Google, started Googling these words, and Google does what it does. There was the answer of the words, meanings. And we're like, cool, this does not help a lot. Now what do we do? Uh, so we turned back to our savior, our teacher for life, YouTube. Went to YouTube, searched how to make plant-based milk. Very easy. Thousands of videos showed up. Started copying those videos. And nothing worked. It was just not working. We mixed it, we filtered it, we used it, nothing. Everything was failing after a lot of failed attempts. Then I finally realized why is it not working? It's not working because there is no stack overflow for these recipes. There's no GitHub. You cannot copy these things online because these recipes are proprietary information of the companies who are selling them. And you're like, what? For me, who, have, who has been living all my life on stack overflow or GitHub, there was nothing of search. And then I tried searching food science forums, nothing. Because the community itself is not very tech savvy as computer science community. There was a not a lot of good forums. So I was in a fix. In my head, for one side, I was finally being able to understand what a nested SQL theory is, a theory inside a theory. On the other, I was measuring oats in a cup, mixing it with water, and maintaining the temperature. So it was a very different field, and everything was changing. And we were still not getting there. So we did what we supposed to do. Uh, went online, wanted to find an expert who can help us. And with a teeny tiny non-existential budget, it was a Herculean task. So I did what I do best, posted it on Reddit, looking for a food scientist to help us make plant-based milk. Crossed my fingers and slept. Next day, and God bless Reddit. Trust me guys, God bless them. We found a very kind human living all the way in the United States of America who was ready to help us in our budget. Trust me, even I didn't believe it at start, <laughs> but she was. So now we have someone who's going to help us and she was ready. So I remember our first call with her. I, I read on the call, I was taking notes and she was saying so many different words which I've never heard in my life. It was all very different. And uh, I, was, I was getting it, some I was not getting, I kept on writing. And it was like a hello world magical moment for me. Like remember when you were kids, you were in computer science class and they asked you to print hello world and it actually appears? That magical. It was that magical for me to learn what was happening. And finally I was able to understand how do you make a shelf stable product. How products around me are actually made. There's a whole science behind. You know like how you cannot run a program before compiling it. Over here you have to check the pH of your product at every stage. It was very similar. Like with the computer science structure in my head, I was learning very structurally and everything was going straight. Like for example, when you write a computer science program, you initialize the variable on the top and then you experiment with it for a desired output. It's the same. You buy raw materials, you experiment with them for the same output, desired output. And that's what we were doing. So it was, it was very different. A whole new segment of the society was unlawed for me. And I was very happy. And it was more exciting than nerve wracking for me. And I was asking all the stupid questions to her, our food scientists, and to all the people around me. Like, how do you mix water with oil? What's a start solution? And why does it keep turning purple for some reason? I was asking all the questions possible. And I got all the answers. So without working in a field completely alien to me, Without formal education, I got basic understanding with, with, with asking stupid questions. Like, why are we using water? Why this much of this? Why not that? I was asking all the questions possible. And finally, I knew all of it. So I just feel it all boils down to asking stupid questions. And you surely and obviously start from a hello world moment in any field of your choice if you want to. And before I leave, I wanted to guys give you one, another example and leave you guys with a question. The another example is of Michel Dottorist. He is the CEO of Arner Bush InBev, a company. I'm sure their product, if not all, most of you guys love. I personally love them. Uh, they made Corona, Budweiser, and Ho Garden. And Michel, the leader, is a chemical engineer, 
not a food scientist. So next time when you're having the corona, remember that it's led by someone who's a chemical engineer. And the question I want to leave you guys with is, what are you guys more afraid of? Giving it a shot or not giving it a shot? Thank you.